everyone to the State of the Nation. In our lead story tonight, is our national carrier, Sri Lankan Airlines, falling apart? Is privatization the only way forward for this cash-bleeding airline? As you all know, Sri Lankan Airlines have been struggling since I believe around 2010. Suddenly, there is a very positive growth and the next moment a downfall. Very recently, you would have witnessed the drama from Katranaika as Sri Lankan passengers were stranded when the airline couldn't find a specific aircraft to carry passengers to Kathmandu. The aircraft assigned faced technical issues and couldn't find a replacement to ensure that the flight continued, hence the chaos. Watch this uh, YouTube report by Josh Carhill, an aviation influencer with over half a million subscri uh, subscribers on YouTube and more than a million on other socials. He recently flew on Sri Lankan Airlines and had some choice words to express about his experience. Watch. Sri Lankan Airlines isn't capable to maintain its planes due to the lack of funding and engineers, which means most planes are either grounded or need extra maintenance to stay airworthy, causing hours of delays to the airline's daily operation. My flight was no different. There seemed to be an issue with the tire and engineers were rushed to the scene to change them which caused an hour of delay. And this is the problem of Sri Lankan Airlines. It does happen on a daily basis and makes them super unreliable. But it was then time to finally board my flight to Singapore, operated by an Airbus A330-200, of which the airline operates five. The average age of this fleet is well over 20 years. Another reason why they constantly break down. However, today we are traveling in economy class, featuring 279 seats in a 242 configuration. Each seat comes with a personal entertainment screen, headphones, a USB slot, and of course, a portable table. I had to give the terrible, filthy window a good wipe to discover another surprise. And yes, you guessed right, we had another technical issue. This time, the wing needed a bit of fixing, which would create another hour of delay. So here I was, in a packed plane, wondering whether we ever get off the ground. Two hours later, a miracle happened and we finally pushed back for our flight to Singapore. And no, this is not a comedy show, this is the everyday business of Sri Lankan Airlines. Not exactly a happy experience uh, for Josh. Well, what we are trying to do here on State of the Nation is not to bash our national airline, but to talk about the problems of it and then try to find lasting solutions that would have uh, helped revive this iconic airline. Sri Lankan Airlines has been making yearly losses. Consecutive events in Sri Lanka since 2019 have not helped this airline. In June, Sri Lankan CEO Richard Natal told the European Aviation magazine that the immediate priority was to restructure the airline's balance sheet given the high cost of servicing its debt and then move to sell the carrier despite the government refusing that statement. We'll hear from the Minister of Aviation shortly. Now here's the raw data. In the 12 months to March 31st, 2023, Sri Lankan posted a loss of 75.03 billion rupees, that's around 232 million US dollars, on revenue of 365.17 billion rupees, that's around uh, 1.13 billion dollars. Clarifying this, Sri Lankan Airlines says that the loss was due to the rupee depreciation and the impact on USD denominated debt. Sri Lankan's management accounts are in USD and earnings and uh, costs are predominantly in foreign currencies. Now, according to them, on its USD accounts, the airline is either breaking even or marginally positive. However, the debt portfolio of Sri Lankan Airlines ain't promising either. Let, uh, let's get some uh, data on that uh, debt issue uh, of Sri Lankan Airlines and for that let's cross over to the data board where economist Imran Furkan is standing by. Imran, good to see you once again. Thank you very much for being here. Imran, uh, what's the story with Sri Lankan Airlines? What's the reason that this uh, national carrier can't even come close to competing with regional uh, carriers when it has the full potential? Um, nice to be with you, Mahesh. Um, well, I think the two main things, right? Uh, occasionally, they are making operational profits, but they are weighed down by a lot of debt uh, from the past, um, and, and the cost of servicing that debt is very high. 
And now, uh, less ours, the people who, you know, Sri Lanka doesn't own a single plane, right? Uh, all the planes are leased uh, from airline companies, airline leasing companies, and they're not very keen on giving them new planes either, because yeah. that's why we can't get those replacement aircraft uh, for these breakdowns very fast. I think they've been trying to get uh, A330 for a long time. Uh, the best they've done is with A320s. Uh, um, and if you look at uh, why that is, um, it's very simple, right? Uh, Sri Lankan's problems are not just Sri Lankan's problem. They are also weighing down uh, several other entities. One is the CPC, right, which uh, uh, the Sri, uh, Sri Lanka owns a lot of money to. And effectively, there was a period, uh, particularly last year, where CP was, CPC was effectively insolvent or bankrupt. Uh, and then the state banks, right, particularly People's Bank and Bank of Ceylon, they have taken a brunt of this debt. And it, this debt is on their balance sheet. And really, it, it creates problems for them as well. And obviously, the international bondholders um, as well. And there's a bit more money, uh, you know, owed to, um, uh, to, to lessors, engine suppliers, and so on. So when you owe these people money, would they give you new planes? Right. Uh, indeed, uh, Imran, uh, with regard to this debt, uh, what you said, uh, I mean, we have data later on as well, um, the fact that nobody wants to give any loans, any money, any anything to Sri Lankan Airlines, and, and the fact that they don't own a single aircraft, that's boring, because, um, you know, where is this airline going to bank on in case, you know, something happens because it, 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 it's not like those days where everything is hunky-dory and there is a peaceful period that we, COVID kind of taught us a, a very valuable lesson. What do you think that they should be doing right now? Well, I think there are, there are a couple of things to do. Restructuring is critical. I think they've done a lot of cost cutting. There's a lot more to do. But restructuring also involves doing, you know, taking, checking up what they have in terms of what is profitable. Right. Uh, so now, remember, Sri Lanka, the government of Sri Lanka owns Sri Lankan Airlines, and what it needs to do uh, very quickly, and I think it, they are working on it, is to remove the profitable parts of this entity uh, and bring it under them, because it, they, are, they will have to assume the debt. Um, you know, if they're going forward um, uh, out of Sri, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, Sri Lankan, so that somebody else can buy it. So, what is profitable? Ground handling is profitable. Sri Lankan catering is profitable. Obviously, these are monopolies. <laughs> that is why it is profitable, right? Um, if it but was, yeah. <laughs> Imran, the the question is, the bread and butter is the airline industry, not the catering or anything. So how come they're getting the catering thing right? That means they're cooking well, but apparently they can't fly properly. Oh, what, 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 what is the issue here, you think? Yeah. Because the, it, it proves that what you just showed proves the fact that apparently there are areas where Sri Lankan is very strong uh, and, and it is profitable. What is the, the blockage, in your opinion, uh, that we can't get the main uh, issue, which is the Sri Lankan airline, which is you know, flying from one destination to the next, taking tourists, uh, carrying people. Um, that particular aspect has been uh, you know, not further to an extent where we can make profits out of yeah. it. So two things, right? Number one is um, the reason why these two are profitable, catering and ground handling, is because they're monopolies, right? But the airline has to compete with other airlines that uh -huh. are run much better. So obviously they are failing in that respect. Um, but also you need to uh, also realize a couple of other things, right? Uh, successive governments have burdened Sri Lankan yeah, yeah. with inefficient workforces, horrible uh, aircraft procurement deals, um, you know, and also the, the issue of, um, uh, you know, forcing, particularly the tourism industry has been trying to force the, the airline to run unprofitable routes, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. benefit, uh, you know, the tourism industry. So I think it's been a bit unfair in, in that context. Indeed. Um, um, yes. The government should come uh, and do their job and make sure that these things have been properly ironed out and let Sri Lankan Airlines uh, do its thing. But um, we, I'll see you uh, in a bit. Uh, but the economy is Imran Furkan. Thank you uh, so much. We had to leave it at that. Now, the debt and operating costs are not the only headaches Sri Lankan Airlines has. Sri Lankan Airlines uh, operates around 70 flights per day with only 23 aircrafts. And out of that 23 aircrafts, four are out of service, meaning they only fly those 70 odd flights per day with just 19 planes. As you can clearly see, most of these crafts are overused and no wonder they break down all the time. Now fixing takes a lot of time, but the technical team does their best to rectify it and put it into service. However, one thing they cannot compromise is safety. I spoke to several Sri Lankan Airlines officials to get the real picture inside Sri Lankan Airlines and the issues they point out are alarming. They spoke to me 
uh, on the condition of anonymity to ensure that we bring the problems of Sri Lankan Airlines, uh, our national carrier, into the foray and find a solution collectively. Now, sources within uh, the company tells us that in a recent attempt to cut costs, Sri Lankan Airlines management has cut meal allowance of onboard flight crews. Now, those are the things uh, Imran pointed out earlier on about cost cutting. This means if you are a flight attendant working on a route, let's say, uh, from uh, Colombo to London, which is uh, around 12 hours, you are entitled to three meals. As a passenger, you will get three meals and any amount of tea, coffee and water, which the cost is embedded in your ticket. However, the crew in overlay flights now has to pay 25 US dollars per meal from their own pocket, meaning the vouchers are provided, but later it will be reduced uh, from their salary. So the crew working on a long haul flight, that's over 12 hours, which is uh, precisely how the London flight takes for one leg, they have to cough up around 75 US dollars. That's almost around 25,000 rupees just for their meals. Now, this decision to drop the meal allowance occurred during the COVID pandemic. However, the management promised uh, that the staff to provide it after a couple of years, but still nothing has happened. Now, in other airlines, this is not the practice. International flight crews are entitled to meals, accommodation, transport and per diem. So, is Sri Lankan so cash strapped that they need to nick into the meal allowance of the crew? Not only that, there's a massive staff shortage as well. If you have been on a long-haul flight, you know how much the crew needs to work to make the flight a pleasant fun for the passengers. Once again, if you go back to the same example of London flight, which operates, uh, I think, around uh, an A330 aircraft with the capacity of around 250 passengers in both classes, it takes about 12 crew members to service it. Nowadays, in most instances, it's just run by nine crew members. There are staff shortages in every Sri Lankan flight, meaning the crew members working on those flights are undoubtedly overworked. So in order to get a response from Sri Lankan Airlines, we pose those questions and concerns to the media manager um, after trying our level best to get the CEO to come and speak to us. However, we were told that he, the CEO, was very busy. But he does do interviews with international media at workshops. So I'm now trying my level best to get into those one of those workshops so I can ask those questions from him. I can understand, honestly, the CEO being busy, but why do they continue to hide behind media statements and bogus image building campaigns puzzles me when there are real questions about the airline's operations. Why can't Sri Lankan Airlines cannot be honest with the Sri Lankan people? After all, this airline is owned by the Sri Lankan people. It's not privatized yet. And even though he, uh, the CEO is doing a job, the CEO is accountable for the Sri Lankan people as his exuberant salary is paid by taxpayer money. Anyhow, Sri Lankan Airlines released this statement to us and they said, well, with regard to the staff meal allowance cost, apparently, just like I said earlier, instead of answering as to why they continue to do this post-COVID, Sri Lankan Airlines says that their salary cuts were imposed on all staff during COVID and that they were mainly austerity measures taken by the company due to financial crisis and as a result of the pandemic. Now, with regard to short uh, staff shortages, Sri Lankan Airlines says that external recruitment is taking place to fill all positions required for the operation. Um, and to the question pertaining to whether the current staff is overworked, well, Sri Lankan Airlines says all guidelines given by the regulator are strictly adhered to at all times. The scheduling department is also audited regularly to ensure that the operation is conducted accordingly. Now, crew schedules and hours are within global norms, and nobody is accusing that uh, they are violating the the hours of of the staff members. Or what? Everyone is saying that there is a staff shortage. So when you need like a 12 crew member flight and you have only nine, obviously the nine is overworked. And with regard to uh, shortages in equipment to fly in respect of the uh, 8A350 aircraft with a lease or purchase, uh, Sri Lankan Airlines uh, confirms that Sri Lankan Airlines did not take delivery of any of these aircraft. 
and the terms of these cancellations are subjected to confidentiality provisions and that shows of course they did not uh, uh, take delivery of any of the new aircrafts because apparently it shows just like you saw earlier in the program with uh, the report from Josh. Well, that was a statement uh, by Sri Lankan Airlines. It seems like that they continue to pay a lot of money for image building purposes and campaigns in order to tell everybody that Sri Lankan Airlines is doing very well. There are no issues. But if you're treating your staff, that's a problem and we have to fix that. Let's get some clarity on the issue about Sri Lankan Airlines. Joining me now from London, UK via Zoom is the former CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines and the present Chief Officer of Jet Airways India under its new management team, Mr. Vipula Gunatilaka. Thank you very much uh, for your time uh, and, and appreciate you talking to me. Now, when talking about Sri Lankan Airlines, uh, I really don't know where to start because there are so many issues regarding our national carrier. Right now, flight delays and other matters are causing a major image issue. People locally and even within the airline seems to be saying we should privatize. But in my opinion, that's a bit risky because a nation needs a national airline. What is your opinion, sir? Uh, how can we fix this airline in a manner that will benefit the country? Good evening, Mahisha. It's my pleasure to join you uh, via Zoom. Uh, yeah, let me start with the first question. Airline, what Sri Lankan airline is going through today is uh, as a result of so many issues and challenges that they have faced over the years. People forget that we just recovering from uh, the worst pandemic in the history. So you would have seen that most of the airlines have gone bankrupt as a result of the effects of the pandemic. So yet Sri Lankan has been able to survive and manage and I think they are still doing their best to conduct business as usual. Of course, most of the airlines uh, went through the bankruptcy process. The country that I work currently in India, uh, two airlines are going through the same process. So that way, Sri Lankan has done a remarkable job. Uh, also, I must also praise the government at that time. They intervened and uh, inducted some capital during the pandemic. So the question is, second question is, do we need an ally? Sri Lanka being an island nation, I always believe and I've been a firm believer that we need a home-based ally. Otherwise, how are you going to connect this island, which is uh, situated in a very crucial location, I mean, between the two superpowers in Asia. So we need an airline. We need a home-based airline. It need not be a national or government-owned airline. Take Maldives, for example. The, I mean, they're doing, they're bringing close to one and a half million tourists today, thanks to the airline plus other airlines helping them. Indeed, uh, sir, financially, this airline is bleeding money and not just money of the airline, but the taxpayer money. How come other airlines seems to be doing well in the region and not Sri Lankan airlines? I think this is as a result of accumulation of so many issues. People forget that we fought a war for almost 30 years. Then I can tell you that during my tenure as a CEO, we went through so we had to face so many geopolitical challenges. I would remember, I would recall starting from the that 46 or 56 day government that had an impact on the airline and the tourists coming in. Then we had the East attack that was a huge setback. And we bounced back from that and we were doing reasonably well. Then we had to deal with the pandemic. So, I mean, all those no airline would have survived, right? Uh, if, uh, I mean, so many multiple bombings uh, during the LTT time, then all those things got affected. So, and also the thing is airlines, are, airlines need a lot of capital. I mean, so sometimes if you do, if you're not living in an economy where there are no huge businesses, which Sri Lanka is, I mean, our businesses are compared to international standards are very, very small. And like India, they got Tata to, I mean, support financially uh, India. So you need a lot of capital and capital uh, induction is important from time to time. 
that doesn't mean that uh, you should be given a free hand, I mean, free flow of capital. But say, our other example is two airlines in India, like Go First and uh, Spice. They're struggling at the moment. One is going through the Chapter 11 process for the simple reason they were owned by the private enterprises so they didn't have enough capital to inject after the pandemic so now they are one airline is already grounded so we we got to be very careful we should not get emotional or we should not go with the trend and say we should privatize privatize we got to look at because airline is important it will play a crucial role in the economy so we need to have the right balance Indeed, uh, well, uh, staff seems to be a very crucial component and right now there's an issue in getting the qualified staff on board. In your opinion, sir, how can we fix that? I think this is a huge challenge. Globally, what has happened is after the pandemic, the airlines have come back to the market, adding more and more capacity, though there's a huge demand. So there's at the moment, there's a supply uh, demand mismatch. So come from a country like Sri Lanka, our systems, I mean, we are still a developing country. Our services are not as great as uh, what you compare and compare to the other countries. So people are, I mean, attracted towards uh, greener pastures. So it's quite natural. So what we should be doing is continuously start recruiting and training people. I think the problem with Sri Lankan was that they did not get the right approvals at the right time soon after the pandemic to recruit these people. I mean, in staff is something people like pilots, engineers, there's a steep learning curve and it takes time to do at least two to three years to produce even a junior uh, first officer. So you need to make those investments and continue. So Middle Eastern Airlines and the Gulf carriers, they are quite fortunate. They've got deep pockets, so they pay whatever the money and get them. Absolutely. Uh, finally, uh, we are running out of time. So uh, very quickly, privatize our restructure. I think we need to privatize. The simple reason is what is more crucial for an airline is ability to make fast decisions, right decisions, quick decisions which Sri Lankan is lacking at the moment with the current shareholding structure. So, I mean, I've been working for a private airline and the decision-making ability is very fast. You want to get an aircraft, you go to the market, source the aircraft, do the right thing, go to the board, get it done in like a few days. But here they have to unfortunately go through all these stringent processes, which is important from a governance perspective and all that. But that is basically hampering the growth and the progress of the airline. So in that context, it's important to privatize, but at the same time, you've got to strike a balance. Privatize who is the shareholder? Has he got sufficient financial capacity in a crisis like now? Imagine if Sri Lanka was uh, running by a private ent enterprise during the COVID time, they would have gone bankrupt, you know, two, three years ago. So that at that time, fortunately, the government intervened and um, injected some money. So you've got to strike a balance. You've got to have the right capital structure. Maybe a private-public partnership uh, would be the way to go, in my view. Indeed. All right. We have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, that was former CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines, Vipula Gunathilaka. Thank you very much. Let's take a short break. More on Sri Lankan Airlines and its current wars coming right up. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.